Citywise, and I'm here to introduce you to one of my favorite places in the whole world, my absolute favorite island in Greece. It's called Kalimnos. I know you've probably never heard of this little island, but it is near and dear to my heart. I've been coming here many, many years of my life. My father did his dissertation here when he was a grad student of anthropology back in the 60s. So this island is very special to me, but I'm going to show you why it's such a wonderful place to visit. So if you want to come explore a really authentic, beautiful Greek island with me, let's go check out Kalimnos and see how wonderful it is. So ready? Here we go. Right now we're here at the port, so just wanted to show you some of the fishing boats. And I'm gonna head into town now, take a look at some of the beautiful architecture. where you've got all these little shops and cafes. We were drawn to these beautiful tapestries. So the guy who owns the shop that sells these, turns out these were made by local kids with disabilities. Most of these things are locally made handicrafts. Some of them are not, most of them are. So, Alyssa, um, uh, our friend, I hope I can call you that, yes. Tasso. <laughs> our friend Tassos, it's explained to me that this building, it's been here for basically a long time, as you can see now, it's abandoned. And it used to be uh, Tassos' family workshop. Because my grandfather. Your yeah. grandfather is from wow. grandfather. It, wa it wasn't our property, but it was here. Right, rented a of... in a family yes. for, you know, carpentry, basically. And unfortunately, uh, someone else bought it, you know, didn't have the money to do anything with it. And since the 50s? Since uh, 1960, nothing happened here. My right. grandfather left, right. so it's ruined. It's ruined. Yeah. But, you know, again, we Behind have... the door, because I am... Yeah? It's the names of, of the brothers. No. And my father really? and his brothers and sisters. Very, very they, they, write, they write the, the, very their names. One of the reasons that Kalimnos is so important to me is because it's been part of our family history for decades. And I want to have you hear from my mommy uh, what it was like for her to have me on this island as a little baby, which I don't really remember. So <laughs> I love these stories so much. Um, this is my mom, Carol Bernard, and uh, she's here to tell us about her experience here on Kalimnos with me. We first came in 1964 before there was even a dock to pull up the big ferry to. So the ferry had to stop in the middle of the water and they came out to the ferry in these little boats. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's pitch black and the and I hear buk, 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 and I hear these people shouting. Of course, in Greek, I didn't understand a word they were saying. And they're screaming, give me the baby, the baby, the baby. And I said, I can't give her my baby, give him my baby. And Russ, my husband, who understood Greek, he said, don't worry, they're so gentle. They love children so much. She's very safe. So my heart was, oh very scary but I handed my precious girl 
you know, to this lovely sea captain who was shouting and screaming. We got into the boat and we landed safely, of course. We found a house to stay in with a family so that I would learn a little Greek and learn my way around a little bit. And it was wonderful and it was terrible because the people were so nice but they had no concept of privacy. That is not part of the Greek personality. So anytime we closed our doors and we wanted to be alone with our baby, it made no difference. They'd open the door and just walk in. So it was very strange for us and we were there for two months or so. I was a graduate student in those days at the University of Illinois doing my PhD work and I wanted to go to Greece to do my PhD work because I had been to sea a few years earlier when I was 20. I'd gone to sea for three months just to see the world and I'd learned some Greek. So I was looking around for things in Greece where I would find seafaring people. Uh, I learned about this island and about Tarpon Springs, Florida. Well, Tarpon Springs, Florida is a Greek community where a very large fraction of the people came from this island. There were other islands, all the sponge fishing islands, Chalki, Simi, Egina, and Kalmus. Kalmus is the, the main one for the population there. And they did sponge fishing because somebody earlier in the century, the beginning of the 20th century, uh, wanted to exploit these sponge beds that were out uh -huh. in the Gulf of Mexico. And so uh, he brought a bunch of people from the Greek sponge fishing islands, from the Dodecanese Islands. And I went to Tarpon Springs in 1963 and 1964 total of eight months, two summers, and studied the sponge fishing industry there. And then, at the end of the second summer, in October 1964, yeah. uh, Mommy and I came here with you. You were at that time a two-month-old baby. Well, after I did a lot of research here, I fell in love with this place. It was very, it, it was a place where we, we really enjoyed being here. We had, we, we loved the physical beauty of it. We loved the food. We loved the, the whole atmosphere of this island. It's, it's never going to be a big, big tourist island. It has tourism, uh, but it's a low key tourism. Hey guys, this is it. This is the Yiro. Oh, my favorite stop in Kalimnos. It's amazing Yiro. Yiro is a um, very typical Greek sandwich and it has this pita bread. It has this sort of um, mix of meat in there. It's very fatty and, and yummy. And it's got tzatziki sauce, which is like a yogurt and dill and garlic. And we've got the works in here. We've got french fries. We have onions. Oh, of the gods, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, I wish you could smell what I'm smelling in here. There's exotic smells like anise, cardamom. These are, this is a real working bakery here, and we are getting some things that are sweet and savory. These here are made on Kalimnos, they are called Tazimo. Oh my god, so good. Guys, we just came from that bakery and they gave us, we, we bought some of these things for gifts for other people, but they gave us some and we're just, we, we, we have tried, to eat it, it's too Yeah, easy. we tried to interact with them, <laughs> we don't speak Greek, I mean, Alyssa just speaks a little bit, 
Uh, but they're so, I mean, like, so hospitable. Mm. And so, um, so we try to purchase something. And of course, you know, with a little difficulty for the language, but, you know, we test and it's very great. Apparently, this bakery has been going on for family for generations. It's been like more than 40 years. And uh, we didn't know, but apparently it's the authentic Kalimnian bakery in the island. Yeah, so. Now we are going to go see a typical Kalimnian house. It's been turned into a folk museum, but it's a really a house where people live. So let's go see what it looks like. These are completely Kalinian designs, not European. for the best plates. Mm -hmm. If someone died, they turned it back. For as long as they didn't feel okay, good to welcome Oh, they turn them around. Around, oh, yes. okay. For one, two years. Uh -huh. hmm. So we have a long history. We have a history more than 3,000 years because Homer, the ancient Greek writer, wrote in his book that the lovers of Penelope used to clean the table with sponges from Kalidna. The old name of Kalinos was Kalidna. 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 Um, we are popular first of all for the men that they did such a risky and dangerous job. It's true that sponges you can find everywhere. But we are lucky because round here they are very good quality. Because they found them very deep. As much deep you find more sponges, as much better quality it is. So because of Greece have very high taxes, always had and has right now. Uh, Kalinian people went for half a year to Africa for sponges because to Africa no so high taxes. <laughs> Yamas. 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 I hope you enjoy yeah, what did. I told you. We love it. Thank you love so it. much. Okay guys, I'm here at the beach. This is Emborios, this beautiful beach here. And we come over to the side of the island because we have friends here. We love to eat at their restaurant. It seems to be a magnet for sailboats as well. And I just listen to that water. And beach here, look behind up there. So this is one of the other reasons Kalimnos is famous today. This is what brings tourists to Kalimnos. 1999, some backpackers show up from Northern Europe, I think maybe from Norway or Denmark and one from, from Italy. And these are rock climbers. And they walk over, they walk in here and they go, man, you've got some great rocks. Oh, really? Yeah, we should exploit this. So those two or three guys, they put in, they, they, they had pitons with them and they put in two or three roots. Now there are 3,000 roots. Now you know what Kalimnos is famous for today. This is one of the most well-known, amazing spots in the world for rock climbing. Apparently it's number two in the world, number one in Europe. So if you look up a rock climbing online, Kalimnos will pop up. So if you're into rock climbing, you definitely gotta check out Kalimnos. This is one of our favorite places to come visit. Here on the other side of Kalimnos, it's called Emborios. And I just love this beautiful little garden, it's so sweet. And there's our friends, and we're gonna have an amazing lunch at Harry's Bar. Look at this beautiful garden. You're my sunshine every morning, light up every moment, make my every dream come true. Oh, I can't describe it. 
So I've been trying to come as much as I can over the years uh, during the month of May, not for the whole month like they do, but I've been trying to come, you know, uh, for a week or so at a time. And uh, this is the first time that I've been able to come and bring Alessandro with me. So it's a place that's so near and dear to my heart and this is one of the reasons. And I'm just so happy to share this with them and with Alessandro and have this amazing place this just part of our, our lives, our part lives. of our hearts. Very, very much, very much. We are now in Telendos. Now we are going uh, down to the staircases. Alyssa, she's pointed out as a fact that there is a, a cross that uh, tells you that we are going now to visit one other chapel, a little church, a small sanctuary, a shrine that's been built up uh, on this edge of the island. Look at the stairs. Look how really a piece of work in the nature. Just uh, you know, in within the rocks, within the mountains, in the heart of these hills, in, in the heart of these rocks, is so beautiful. So, guys, we reached the bottom of this beautiful staircases that uh, brought us here at the very entrance of this beautiful shrine, chapel, dedicated to San George, San Giorgio. I figured this out because. I had a little interaction with the man now that's taking maintenance of the place, but I saw a lot of pictures like this. St. George and a Drake, uh, Catholic tradition. Um, I happened to notice that uh, all the shrines I've been visiting in this beautiful trip in Kalinos, now in Telendos, they're absolutely extremely well kept, dramatically uh, built within the rocks and the mountains on top of the hills and now in this case and the bottom of the hill facing the ocean again so beautiful and so peaceful so guys literally literally look what we're looking right now don't that sky look blue it comes So part of the charm of calling those is that everybody wants to get involved in everything you're doing. They're all such kind, nice people, and this is such an honest place. You can leave your car open, you can leave your rooms open, and nobody would ever go in. And so even though there's more stores and restaurants and hotels, the people are the same, which is what we love the most about this place. <laughs> Thanks for bringing me here and getting me to love this amazing island so much. We're so glad you're here with us. We're so glad. I'm here.